Dine Out magazine is here at Bleecker in Bloomberg ahead of the Champion of Champions event in September. It's a 10 year anniversary of the National Burger Awards and we're lucky enough to have three previous winners of the National Burger Awards from the past 10 years with us today in El Perro Negro from Glasgow, the Beefy Boys and we also have Bleecker here as well in their home turf. We're going to talk about a variety of things, all things burgers today and get a little bit of a sense check as to how they're feeling ahead of this monumental event in a couple of months time. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. A um, little introduction of yourselves. Zan, we'll uh, head over to you first, please. Sure, I'm Zan Kaufman. I am the founder of Bleecker Burger, who is a small London burger chain. Okay, I'm Murph. I'm uh, one of the founders and directors of the Beefy Boys. We've got a site in Hereford, Shrewsbury and Cheltenham. Yeah, I'm Nick, uh, owner of El Perro Negro, and we're based up in Glasgow. Now, can you remember what years you've won the National Burger Awards, guys? Here's a test off the top of your heads. Yeah. Yes. 2020, 2024. Uh, we won two awards in 2023. Uh, 2019 and 2021 winners. Excellent. So you're a uh, burger aficionado, I think it's safe to say. Um, how do you guys perceive the current burger market in the UK at the moment um, in terms of popularity, um, potential success for individual businesses or group businesses and anything in between that? Uh, Nick, we'll head over to you first. Yeah, um, so I think it's, it's always going to be popular. Um, I think that the quality that's in the British burger scene is probably better than it's ever been at uh, any time. Um, I would comfortably say um, we're definitely better in, in the UK. It's definitely stronger than the States at the moment. I would even say mm -hmm. better than New York. Um, and it's, it's just growing, it's just getting better. And I think a lot of that's down to the, the fact that people really care about what they're doing and using really, really good product. And we're sort of very lucky to have such amazing like butchers and um, meat suppliers and things now that, that can sort of knock out like really, really proper, dry aged, high quality beef, um, which it's, it's never been a better time for it, I think. And Zan, you obviously started in burgers in New York. Would you agree with that, that, uh, that England has, has overtaken it in that respect? No, no. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. I think there. <laughs> I think the average burger in New York is a lot higher than here. So here you have to really search and find the great people in between the in the field or whatever. Um, I think yeah, it's just it's hard to compete with New York. It's so in their blood, you know. And I think there's so many places in New York that are so overhyped, but it's the ones. The ones you don't know about, like you walk into a, a diner and you'll get such a good burger. So in that sense, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe we should go back to New York to get yeah, let's, let's eat some burgers in. <laughs> and uh, Murph, you guys um, have uh, appeared on uh, national television recently because of the success of your business. Um, you make it look so easy, but how actually is it out there as a burger operator on the high street to be successful? Um, turn a profit and actually uh, keep succeeding at the moment? Oh man, I mean, I think it's tougher on hospitality at the moment than it ever has been. I mean, we've had a really, really tough, you know, since sort of COVID and just a bit sort of before, things have been pretty tough for hospitality. But I mean, the good thing about burgers is they are just so universal. Do you know what I mean, I think it's one of those great products that like, you know, your nan likes a burger, your kids like a burger. It's, and I always think the UK's hit peak burger then just keeps on going and burgers just keep on reinventing themselves. So, I mean, a few years ago, it was all about the you know, your medium rare, your less than thoroughly cooked uh, sort of burgers, and now it seems to be moving towards the smash patties. So I think it's just one of those constantly evolving sort of things. I don't, I, I, for years I've been waiting for burgers to sort of crash and become unpopular, but it just doesn't seem to happen. They just seem to be going up yeah. and up and up. So you just, it's a tough marketplace, I think hospitality in general, but I think burgers just are always going to be popular on the high street to a certain degree. Yeah, I would agree with Muff for sure that hospitality now is probably tougher than it's ever been. Um, we could talk all night regarding where the problems are and, and putting them to rights or whatever else. Um, but yeah, um, I think, as you said, burgers are a universal thing. Um, it's a great, I've always thought it's been a great vehicle to give someone what would, what would be like a really quality product in a very affordable manner. I think is the best way of putting it. I think we all use like really high-end beef, um, which would normally be out of reach for a lot of people if it was in the form of a steak or something like that. Um, so yeah, um, I, I think we 
definitely get, I think the burger scene is continually going up, mm. it's continually improving. Um, and I think obviously, as long as you're using good product, it's kind of takes care of itself. I think everyone's kind of pushing each other as well to yeah. get better, do you know what I mean? So it's almost like, because you've always got to have your own sort of competition. And I think what's happened in Britain with burgers over the last sort of 10, 10 to sort of 12 years is like, we've had some amazing people crop up and then another amazing person will sort of crops up and everyone's just sort of like pushing themselves a little to get better and better each sort of year. And I know we, as a brand, we're always looking at how we can make ourselves better and what the new burger trends are and trying to stay, you know, true to yourself and what you think, you know, your your thoughts and your love for burgers, but obviously modernise with it as well. So I know that's something that we're always really conscious of sort of trying to do. And collaborations and clearly a good thing. We're here today ahead of one that you're doing at Bleeker and Bloomberg this evening. Are these a regular thing of importance to you guys or something uh, nice to do, like for instance, for charity today? Yeah, I think it's like th threefold. Like we, we have a really simple menu, so, we don't love doing specials because I think if, if there's a great special and it's good enough, it should go on the menu. So it's like we steer away from that. So this is an opportunity to be a bit playful, pair up with a chef that we admire and then also raise money for charity. So it's, it, it adds a bit of fun to a brand that we take ourselves quite seriously. So it lines the move for a night. <laughs> You've obviously enjoy your own burgers, but when you're not eating in your own kitchens, uh, where is your go to burger? Murph, we'll start with you. Um, I think one of my favourite burgers and one of my most memorable ones is uh, in and out burger. When myself and my wife went on our honeymoon, we did, went all the way down from California, I drove down to Pacific 101. And um, a lot of times I think with burgers as well, it's not just the burger itself, you know, it's like, it's like the context in which you have it. Do you know what I mean? I've had some amazing burgers at sort of three in the morning that in hindsight probably weren't that amazing. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? That sort of state, they were exactly what I sort of needed but I think yeah one of my most memorable and favorite burgers outside of one of my own yeah would be in and out in America yeah. Uh, Zan, uh, your, your, your burgers that yeah, you'd rate know. aside. I'm just remembering uh, like the few months ago I went to I'm not I don't eat a lot of burgers that's the thing like I'm not a burger lover I love making our burger I love great beef but I went to Burnt uh, the barbecue place in, in uh, East London and their burger was like and it's not my kind of burger, it's more of a smash burger. And it like, I was like, wow, this is really surprisingly great. What was it about it? It just, um, like, it retained a lot of juice. It had a lot of flavor. Like, it had a bit of that smoke, um, which most burgers don't have because they're cooking on flat top. So it's just, yeah, it was well put together, some of its parts. So I almost don't want to have it again because I think it might tarnish the first time. But it's a perfect yeah, experience. Yeah. Excellent. Nick, what about yourself? Um, I think as San said, I'm not a huge burger eater all the time. Um, I do have my favourites though. Um, Elliot Cunningham and Legom, um, the guys in Whole Beast and Bleaker as well. Um, it's like big quality burgers. Uh, Bleaker was open before I started doing burgers and it was like one of the ones I always looked to when I was down in London. Um, it was a big inspiration for what I do. Yes. Uh, <laughs> sticking you in it there. Uh, <laughs> and, and, but if we were going wider afield, um, one of the, the ones that I really, really enjoyed uh, was Seventh Street in New York. Um, totally unassuming. Like it wasn't a big fancy deal. They just went in and done just a really quality beef, just fatty. And that's I think that's the thing the common denominator with all those burgers that I've. Um, so I said there that it's like high fat content, really juicy, really succulent, full of flavour. And that's what it should be. It should be like this sort of naughty treat. That's, that's what a burger is. It's, it should be really accessible just to really enjoy it. And it's, honestly, all four of them are right up there in my estimation. I've not tried Murphs. <laughs> like, I'd love to try Murphs. I'll go to Hereford at one point. Uh, but that's the ones I have tried that I really enjoy. Yeah, it always comes down to the beef, doesn't it? That yeah, is, always. Do you know what I mean? And like having judged, you know, you've judged Burger Awards. No, I've never judged them. Well, having like, sat in that judge's mm, seat, yeah. like you've done uh, a couple of times, Nick. It's that beef. That is the most important thing. It's the one thing you remember, the thing the flavor you get first. And at the end of the day, a burger should be a massive celebration of, of that beef. Yeah. And, and all, all the best ones are, I think. It should just complement it. Everything else should complement it. It's, I've never been a big fan of the leaning tower of burger. <laughs> I think it's like when people start pulling like pulled pork and like brisket and things, uh, 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 like it should be quite honest. It should be quite simple. Um, it shouldn't have that many components on it if you are going to do it. I think that, that's absolutely right and we've, we've noticed it doesn't take a genius to see what style of burger and ingredients the National Burger Awards winners 
have displayed yeah. over the past 10 years, um, none of them have been one of those leaning tower of burgers, yes. as, as you so aptly put it. Um, but on to the National Burger Awards. Um, it's a, it's a competition that has grown in stature just as a burger business does. And I think over the 10 years, we've seen the quality of entries and the number of entries grow year on year. And uh, I think it's testament to anyone that's, that's won it, uh, particularly in the latter years, um, for, for just how much you've, you've uh, performed against your fellow peers. Um, how have you guys found the competition in terms of preparing for your entry, competing on the day and post wins? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we, we break down the whole process, like what burger are we doing? We need to talk to our butcher, we need to talk to our baker, telling them this is a competition, you need to, you're, everything you do needs to be perfect on this day. And I think a lot of people don't do that, that I was talking to this time, like, oh, did you talk to your butcher at all before? Or you're, And I think it's sort of, that's the relationship we have with our suppliers, because my butcher I talk to like every two weeks. And so this would naturally be something I talk to with, with him. But I think that bit is really important because having that relationship generally and then at competition time, like you need everything to line up. And it's like just planning the logistics because there are a lot of moving parts at your competitions. You know, it is not easy. So we had like spreadsheets with various tabs, sitting down, meetings, you know, it steals a lot of time. But it's worth it. It's worth it. And it's, <laughs> it's worth it. But yeah, we take it. Yeah, seriously. And it's a lot of planning. And Murph, I know when, when you entered, um, we actually got a tip from our host, uh, Christian Stevenson, aka DJ Barbecue. When he saw that you'd been shortlisted, he, he texted us saying they're going to win. Um, <laughs> which obviously he's not on the judging panel, so it had no effect yeah. by that. But that was his perspective of, of your business. He's put you in that high regard. Um, why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. Obviously, Christian's a, a bit of a legend and we've met him quite, quite a few times. So he hosts the Ludlow uh, Food Festival stage and we're, we're sort of always up there. Um, so obviously, he's had our burgers uh, quite a bit. Um, and I think very much um, like these guys, we, we're all about simplicity uh, with our burgers. And I think especially when you're doing a competition, do you know what I mean? You don't want to give yourself uh, things to get wrong. Do you know what I mean? So I think the simpler you can keep it, the better. And there's so many variables with the competition because, you know, you, you're not using the grills, so you're using your restaurant. You're in an unfamiliar surroundings, and like I think the, the one that I did in 2023, we were sort of semi sort of outdoors with the, with the cooking, and that changes. You know, the, the temperature of your grills can drop. You get a bit of wind, and it affects it all. So you just got to be really tactile and really responsive to adapting how you cook to to what's happening in front of you. You know, just doing what you would do in a restaurant isn't necessarily uh, going to work. I mean, what I've always found is we've been lucky enough to do quite a few burger competitions now, uh, not just the National Burger Awards, but it's just to really enjoy it and to not overthink it and not to sort of stress yourself out because it's really mad so when you cook for a competition I find you know you're doing like three burgers and you know when you're working in a restaurant you'll be cooking hundreds of burgers in a day do you know what I mean so it's something that you do all the time and it's a lot of it's muscle memory and things that you're just used to doing but it's the pressure of cooking then just three burgers and just trying to make sure that those three burgers are the three best burgers you've ever cooked it can be a bit overwhelming so <laughs> I'm just trying to just not worry about it just enjoy it and just do what you do and just put it out and if it you know as long as you've done your best it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you win or come last or whatever you put up the best food that you could possibly do so that's my approach so yeah, i'm kind of blown away you had a spreadsheet i was going to say yeah. that is that's organizational but, but, that's... are you kidding me there was a vegan burger there were like and there was like you had to use these this mayonnaise and this sauce and this mayonnaise i don't know how else you kept it straight i was all up here with it <laughs> <laughs> we only need, like five things here so like you know having a this is a big venue for us <laughs> Nick, are you a spreadsheet guy when it comes to competitions? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, but uh, prep, prep, and more prep. Um, so I think as Zan touched on, I will be in touch with the butchers. I will be in touch with the bakers. Uh, I will make sure that all the prep, everything's done uh, probably by myself. I will be timing myself when I'm cooking the burgers in advance. <laughs> um, I'm kind of, as Murph sort of touched on with the different variables, because you're obviously in a different kitchen environment than what you're probably used to. Um, I came from doing pop-ups. I was walking into other people's kitchens. Uh, I'm used to maybe doing stuff on the hop, uh, and I think that's probably um, where I've kind of sort of excelled a wee bit, I think, is, is being able just to adapt quite quickly into sort of 
quite high pressure situations. Uh, Metopia, God, you've done, yeah. everyone's done Metopia here as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's... Nothing's happening than that. That is a baptiz yeah. It's a baptism of fire, yeah, literally. literally. Uh, <laughs> it is, it's one of the best things I've ever done, but it's, it's so tough to do. And yeah, Didn't you have one of the longest queues because it, you just won the Burger Awards, right? And you had, yes. you had that marketing so on, on never, top. We never expected that at all when we done it. Um, we were in, obviously we're in with like Bleaker, uh, people that are known in London, huge Michelin star chefs, like guys coming in internationally. And um, the first year they had to like put crowd control around <laughs> the first one. And it was just because we considered ourselves a total outlier. Um, and when it opened, they opened all early for VIPs and all that sort of carry on. And it's like, we were getting inundated from right from the off. It was brutal. Um, but it was also amazing. It's like it, it, it validates winning these competitions is like a validation for like all the hard work that you have to do, mm. and there is a lot of hard work. And um, on that winning moment, actually, I mean, we're on the other side of it as event hosts, as Dine Out magazine, and we get to have the privilege of announcing who's won these awards. How does it feel when you hear your name said? You've gone, we've gone through, as Dan said, many other awards before that big moment arrives at the best burger in the UK for that year. Does your heart Pound, does your stomach drop? Do you just want to scream? How does it feel at that particular moment? Murph, over to you. Oh, it's, uh, it's, all, cause it's always you came down from three, didn't you? So you're not third, and then you're not second. And I remember like when in 2023, um, myself and Dan, one of the other boys, we were literally putting our coats on, you know, about to walk out the doors. We were like, we've done it there. And then obviously we got, we got our names for first. And it's just such an adrenaline rush. It really, really is. Because you do, like, so you, like Nick said, I think all of us have probably put so much of our lives and our hearts and our souls and our passion and literally sweat and tears into building our businesses to, to sort of where they are today and just to get that kind of recognition um you know it's just you know it's really validating as well yeah. because you're competing against your peers and you know what i mean it's like we you end up getting surrounded by your own business and you know what i mean you know your stuff and you see these other people and you think and you do get that imposter syndrome yeah don't you? totally yeah and being like you know what i mean i'm not in the same league as them so to get to compete on that level and then to be recognised at that level was just so amazing. Do you know what I mean? So, it was, yeah, it was, it was an incredible, incredible thing. A proper rush. It really was. Sam, you weren't there this year when uh, that announcement good. was made, but I did hear most of your team scream <laughs> on the stage, and I think I heard them call you to, to update you as well. Yeah, I was giving my kids a bath, and I was convinced we didn't win. Like, I just, I don't know, I, I didn't feel it. Like, I was like, no, we didn't get it this year. So I, like, sort of lost track of where the competition was, like, and. They called me screaming, and I was like, picked up my kids, and I was like, yes! <laughs> so like, as adults, you don't have a lot of opportunity to win things, right? As kids, there's sports, there's competitions. You get used to winning or not winning, but adults really don't get that. So it's like, yeah, as Merce said, it's like culmination of everything coming together at that moment where you get to celebrate with, like, you know, your team and your loved ones. So it's like, yeah, it's awesome. I think that might have been the loudest cheer I've heard actually this year when the league won. There was quite a few of them yeah. in the crowd. Uh, whereas Nick, it's usually just you solo um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, when when I'm you've quite, won. Um, bit of a lone wolf when it comes down to <laughs> doing the competitions. I'm like my girlfriend tries to come down, like business partners, and I'm like, I need to be by myself to do this. Interesting. Yeah, like I, I'll, I'll like. For whatever reason, like I, I mean, a lot of people would probably testify that I'm quite absent-minded at the best of times. Um, but for some reason, when I come into these competitions, it's it is like a switch, um, and I somehow managed to be quite organised and really on it and things like that. I had like people commenting the mise en place, everything <laughs> laying out when you get the chance to like. It's almost like a, feel like a Formula One pit team when you have to get all your stuff set out and ready for um, when you're actually entering it. Um, when you've won, obviously you've won twice. Um, which felt more special, the first time or the second? 2019, I, I think, like, the, the, the first, first time, time. yeah. yeah. Um, for me, it was particularly rough opening up when we d opened up in 2018. Um, there's obviously a lot, like, like I've, we had other business partners and things, and it's just, it's hard work at times. It was hard work getting the build done, like, it's just so much drama, unnecessary drama, as it were. Um, but. Being able to come down to London and taking part in something like this among really big hitters. And I mean, there's no other way of saying that. It's like, we're the little guys. Um, and then to get called out, you're like, that's that's all worth it. Like, there was a serious point at 
2018 when I first opened, I was like, do I really want to keep on doing this? Because yeah. it was it was that it was that rough at points, and that kind of changed it. And from there, lots of doors opened, uh, lots of different opportunities. Got to meet some really amazing people. We've met so many great, great people from like doing the Burger Awards and other things that have, have came off the back of that. Um, so yeah, it's it's good. But we've got one more event coming up. Um, we're here today to, to talk about uh, obviously your businesses and previous victories, but there's a Champion of Champions event in September coming up, which is the celebration of 10 years of National Burger Awards. Um, we have three rounds of every Burger Awards event that we've done. So we're bringing back winners of all three of those rounds from the past 10 years, hence there's 30 burger chefs competing in September. How's everyone feeling about uh, the event in general, we'll talk about prospects in a second. There's a lot of nerves going around. Zan, you're never on, on the grill, so are you a bit calmer about it than these chaps? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, it's like, you have to keep out doing yourself, right? So it's like, how far can we push this? Can we win again? And I think obviously being against all the other champions, it is like, you know, this is the, uh, the Olympics of uh, burger competitions. So. It's exciting though, so... Um, Feels yeah. like an oxymoron, doesn't it? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, and it's, it's always my, like, I think September is such a great time to have it because it's like, you sort of relax over the summer, you get through it, and then it's like back to business in September, refocus, so it's a good time. You know, it's exciting. Excellent. Murph, how are, the, how are you and the Beefy Boys team uh, feeling about it? Oh yeah, we're, we're over the moon uh, to be to be part of it. I mean, when you look at the lineup and you look at the names, and it's like you know, if somebody asks you, can you put a list together of the best best burgers in the UK? It's literally that list of competitors. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's always good people entering every single year, but specifically this one is like you know, there's just some fantastic people there. So yeah, it is nerve wracking uh, to be up against them, but it's also kind of like. It's just really awesome to be in that conversation with those same people and to be all on that same level. So, yeah, nerve-wracking about the competition, but just over the moon to be part of that level in what I guess we call like the Premier League of of yeah. Davis, you know. Yeah, or the Scottish top division, of course. Yeah, that's pretty crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there's only two horses in that race as well. Um, I, yeah, it's like the Burger Champions League. Um, it's. I'm hugely, I'm a nervous person at the best of times. I'll be very nervous um, for this one. And but as you said, it's it's just great to be in and around it yeah. um, and, and being here. Like, it's enough for me to have won twice. Um, anything else is a bonus after that point. Um, and I think the big thing is just getting in and enjoying it and just having, like, just doing the best, the best that you can. Uh, and then if it works out, brilliant if not it's also brilliant because we're also there as well so it's there's not i don't think there's any losers really uh i know zan's like super competitive but like <laughs> uh, but there are no losers in this everyone like it's, it's a massive thing to be taking part in this a uh, huge thing and it will be like i i'm looking forward to it but also terrified and at the moment we're asking our 30 finalists they've got a deadline to submit the burger that they're going to put forward we're we're encouraging people to to submit the ones they've won previously with but that's not an absolute rule any thoughts on what you guys might be submitting uh for this particular event so you're nodding murph you you ready to go oh uh, yeah 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 we're waiting for these love <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i think we're going to put up um what we what we won with uh, before because it's my favorite burger it's the one that i have at work uh, as the my Oklahoma staff food. smash is that it is so we do obviously inspired by uh, uh by the legend uh yeah inspired by george Watts. uh it's, it's the oklahoma smash we do ours with uh, we spray a little bit of american mustard on it before we flip it so that sears into into the onions so that's our little sort of twist on it so yeah because that burger specifically it's just meat very much like a little bit it's obviously a different cooking process but very much like uh like the bleak burger it's just meat onions cheese do you know what i mean and not much else really so like i said before i think we've all sort of touched upon it's about those awesome ingredients and letting those speak for themselves and i think that's that's what we'll we'll do um and hopefully fingers crossed nick the top, the top dogs top that come dog. yeah, yeah. take us um, through what the top dog is uh, so, I mean, we're talking about like simplicity and beef being the star of the show and things, and then I'm going to rhyme off these ingredients, and then everyone's going to go like that. What? What are you talking about? But um, it sounds heavy. It's like, I mean, it is a rich, indulgent burger. It's kind of inspired from like American steakhouses, 
um, and just obviously my sort of twist on that. Um, it's obviously aged um, short rib marrow patty, bone marrow and roquefort butter, double bacon, caramelised onions, black truffle mayo. Um, now, that sounds, that sounds more indulgent than it uh, actually is, but the, it the thing... Well, it doesn't, it's, uh, yeah, but it's also, I think, the, the, the trick with the top dog, I think, and it always has been the trick, still our biggest seller, it's like 20% of all our sales, right. of everything that we do, it's a, and it's the most expensive product that we have. It's, it, just, it's, it just does well all the time. Um, but the trick with those burgers is that, although there's a lot of like additional ingredients, like big heavy ingredients in there, Rockfort cheese, truffle, like these are things that are quite indulgent, big, big flavours, but the, the tricks to balance it and those flavours actually complementing that rich, bo heavy bovine aged flavour uh, of the beef. Um, and it's one of those ones that once you get that taste in the back of your mouth and you can still taste it, I think we talked about this, like away from the camera, we're talking about the, the lasting thing should be mm. that sort of beefy taste. You want someone to remember going, that was really good. And I've been lucky. I think is the best way of putting it. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what it looks like when we, we get down, down to it. Uh, Sam, you're, I think there's a team decision, isn't there, behind what Bleak enters to these things? I know I can... Undoubtedly, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, a, you know, conversations. I'm not going to say what we're doing because I'm not 100% sure. I'm probably 75% sure. But it's going to... Whatever we do is going to take a lot of preparation to get it right. So <laughs> there is... It is... Literally, this product is on my yearly goals for this reason. So, yeah. Exciting. <laughs> so a return of the bleaker black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it would make sense. It's a, but who knows? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, good luck to you all. Thank you, Thank you very much for your time uh, today. And uh, we'll see you all in September.